Oh hey, if cats have kind of made your room a nightmare but you still think they're beautiful angels, you might like today's episode. Welcome back to another special episode of Laugh Cry DIY. I am your girl Katie, and today we are taking on a very exciting challenge. I am standing here in the very, very epic bachelor pad that belongs to my friend Josh. Hey, it's Josh. Josh, why did you call me over? Well, you know, one of the things that's been going on in my life is uh, I think, you know, I'm, I, I seem like the comedian who sort of has it together in their personal life when I'm out in the world. And then, you know, I'll meet a girl and she'll come back to my house and realize, oh, he doesn't have it together. So I'm hoping that you'll help me turn this place into a place that can fool them for a little bit longer. And Josh called me over because he lives with multiple animals as well as two cats. AKA, he has multiple roommates, but most of this devastation has not necessarily been caused by Josh and his roommates. Because Josh is a comedian, filmmaker, and the very proud cat dad of two beautiful sweet boys who are beautiful, but kind of nightmares. Yeah, um, my last girlfriend uh, found the cats in the backyard of her office and she was like, can we keep them? Meaning, can you keep them? So now uh, I have two cats and I love them. I mean, they're the devil, but I love them. Okay, so our goal here is to redecorate, to manipulate women, and to give Josh the living room of his dreams on the budget that we have. So Josh and I have done a lot of therapy. We've done a lot of kind of energy work together. And we have realized in this process that Josh is a mid-century kind of eclectic fan. So today we are going to redo the living room and we're gonna do what we can to kind of give him a little bit more of a chill, fun vibe. I'm excited. Excited. All right, let's start. Now, this bachelor pad has all of the classic makings of a bachelor pad. We've mismatched furniture, we've got some tears, we've got some wear, but there's one thing in this space that I promise that you and me have never seen before. Oh, you know, just your regular average uh, family guillotine. Oh, I thought you meant my bald spot. <laughs> oh. ah! Josh, why the hell do you have a guillotine in your living room? So, uh, I used to be a professional magician. Uh, I guess you never stop being a magician. I just don't do it professionally anymore. I think, I think magicians are born, not made. Would you yeah, agree? Yeah, well, you know, it was my grandfather that was a magician who taught my dad, who taught me it's kind of like being a cantor or royalty. I used to work at a magic store in New York that had one of these, which they would like rent for $400 and charge like 1500 to purchase or something. And I would just check the internet and one day I saw this for $200 and I was like, this must be mismarked, but I ordered it and um, it came. Hey, when you see the perfect piece for you, you when gotta When you see get the it. perfect guillotine, you grab that. <laughs> we will be incorporating this into the design. We will not be moving it. It lives here full time. Does she have a name? Does she have a no? Wow, okay guys, comment below if you guys have a good name for the guillotine. Uh, but for now, I just need you guys to see that she exists in this space because this is a Laugh Cry DIY um, first and last. So thus far, a few things have changed in this room. Josh got rid of those old horrific couches. Uh, we had a TV installed and what remains is just like a sprinkle of things that we're still working on getting out of the space. Uh, what we have left is a rug and uh, this, this beauty queen, this classic Ikea coffee table that has seen many better days and probably deserves the guillotine. Hey! <laughs> All right, uh, so we're gonna get rid of her. Catch. Now, fun fact, Josh is going away to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival for 30 days, so he will not be here for most of the makeover, but I will be forcing him to do the manual labor of this rug because it has seen many better days. I didn't agree to the manual labor part of this. <laughs> just wanted... He just wanted to, to do over. his magic. <laughs> All right. Now, what we're doing today is what I would call a sort of bare minimum makeover. Low budget, simple, easy fixes to make the space a little bit more fun, make it a little bit more chill. And that starts with a whole new world of couches. 
Because we knew we wanted to go for a mid-century vibe, Josh went really hard on the secondhand apps looking for some nice secondhand mid-century couches. And boy, did we score. With these gorgeous, elegant, beautiful couches. They the only one's got the guillotine. <laughs> We're gonna start counting how many times we say that. <laughs> this is 79 inches of beautiful smoky gray, clean lines, tufted pillows, um, nice and long for the fellas because they're grown boys and in really good condition for an incredible price. But we didn't just get one sofa. Why would we just get one? You know we had to get two. Gorgeous. And Josh had mentioned that when he got this, the people said that the legs were an addition that they added on their own. And that is such an easy way to upgrade an old sofa. Um, these are very beautiful kind of tapered walnut legs, but just pro tip, if you guys can't get a new sofa, maybe you can get new legs. And it is time to bring in a very new, very beautiful rug. Alrighty, here we are with this beautiful, blue, glamorous, geometric rug. Because we were leaning into the kind of mid-century style, and I am a maximalist at heart, um, I knew I couldn't put paint or pattern on the walls, so if you can't do that, splash it all over the floor. I wanted to do this for a few reasons. Number one, we have these smoky gray couches, which are beautiful and clean, um, and we needed to bring in a sort of color palette to complement those and kind of bring a little bit of pop to them. So I thought, we have smoky gray, we have straight men, what color should we do? Blue. Evidence of our, um, our very chill cat. <laughs> One thing I do like is that this is a bold geometric pattern. It has many shades of blue, and I do feel like Tony's stripes kind of complement the stripes in here. Hi. Hi. Can we nice? Okay. And best of all, I think this was on sale for like $40. Oh, he's grooming. He loves it. Now, when Josh called me, I thought we were going to be getting rid of all the furniture in the room. And that was the plan, but then ultimately Josh decided to keep this lazy boy. And I get it. It's comfy, it's big, it's cozy, and sometimes there's just a piece of furniture that you want to keep around because you just freaking like it. So my proposal, aka Josh's idea, was instead of getting rid of this guy or getting a new one, why not just get a clean uh, throw cover for it? This is nice because with the cats, we can make sure you can take it off and wash it, which is always helpful with all pets. Two, it's like 20, 30 bucks to give your piece a new life. And three, we thought, well, at least let's use it as an opportunity to bring in a new color to the space. Now, because we have the gray couches and the blue, it may seem like obvious choice to kind of go with like a navy or another gray. If you already have two matching pieces of furniture, you want the third one to be like a fun pop, a fun accent, something different. So we got a cover. That is bold as hell, aqua, turquoise, teal, extravaganza. This is a great option. To be fair, not all um, covers are gonna perfectly cover your furniture, but sometimes, like if it's choosing between my least favorite color on earth, grayish, or a fun aqua, why not do that? That said, putting these on can be kind of a pain. Whoa, cool. Now they do have this old piece of furniture, which is like something between a large desk and a dresser and a credenza and a sideboard. Um, and it's cool and fine, but we're gonna get something that's like a little bit more on theme. I'll be right back to get that. Look guys, Josh is back. We lied. He's not gonna be gone before we film the rest of this makeover. So say hi, Josh. Hey, how you doing? Already sweaty, first move of the day. After this, first move of the day, I kind of wish I had been gone. <laughs> so what we have here is a beautiful, lovely mid-century credenza that Josh found on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it's secondhand, but it's in pretty great condition. We like the walnut wood complementing the sofa legs. We like the white front providing a crisp, clean visual moment. Anything else you'd like to say about it, Josh? Oh, I, I just remember like uh, before I got the credenza when we had the old credenza in, I was kind of like, do we really need a new one? And now that I have the new one, I'm like, oh yeah, this was a good move. Tony, thoughts? Great. 
Now, the credenza is beautiful, works to scale, works with the theme of the room, but there is one thing that we cannot ever have in a room, which is a uh, visible TV cord, boo, boo. Luckily, I have a great solution. Let me get it off frame. Say hi to today's special guest star, Cord Cover. Guys, these are so easy. If you don't know, they have sticky on the back. ASMR. Guys, this is so easy. You just stick, slide this bad boy up, and no one will ever have their eyes aching again. Where did it go? <laughs> Now you guys, even though the credence is beautiful and the cord is covered, we do have a little bit of a <gasps> moment of hell. Josh, would you like to explain what's happening here? Yeah, so, uh, you know, when I got the new TV, I hired a task rabbit to uh, mount it to my wall because I wasn't going to do this. So uh, I have this guy come and uh, first he mounted it so that the top of the thing was like almost up at the ceiling, like over this. And I was like, no, you got to redo it. So then he mounted it also still too high. And I was like, you got to redo it again. And then by like the third time in like second and a half hour of being here, drilling holes through my wall. This wall is nearly bulldozed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he finally got it here and I was like, I'll accept it. The problem is it is not centered between these two perfectly center uh, windows. So at this point, we're just going to live with what we have with a slightly off center TV. And now we have to make the choice of do we center to the TV or to the wall. And because the TV is the most like obvious visual element, I'm going to center it to the TV. But you at home can cry on our behalf and your behalf because you have to see a slightly off centered TV and credenza. Tony, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we are moving on to the mortal enemy of the room, which when I first came to scout this place was like the instant thing that both Josh and I knew needed to be fixed. And I think that today is going to be very healing for Josh because these three blinds, I think, are responsible for 90% of his problems in life. Oh, literally, I'm like trying to find a sublease for my place right now. And when I film the room, I just start there and end there. So the cats have terrorized the blinds. They have been here for a long time. And as Josh can now demonstrate, uh, this is the problem when you try to <laughs> lift them up. Obviously, blinds are a big problem in house, and also blinds are very expensive, and we're on a super tight budget. So we were trying to figure out like what is the best solution and what is something that aesthetically uh, works with the room that we dig, and also that Josh not only can tolerate, but actually loves. And the answer is bamboo blinds. We really love the texture of these beautiful blinds. Uh, we don't actually need as much like actual light coverage as uh, a normal blind would be. So for these, we feel like they're a vibe, they're a moment, they add texture and a beautiful wood tone to the room. And yes, we know that the cats are gonna take to the blinds no matter what, um, but these are a very inexpensive option. I'll have them linked below. And uh, we feel like at this point, anything is better. Anything other than a tacked up sheet is gonna be a better thing for Josh and his roommates. But now is the best part because Josh gets to take his rage out on these blinds forever. Do it to it, Josh. <laughs> How do you feel, Josh? Like my cats? <laughs> I do get it. If you guys are ever wondering uh, what's in my bag at all times, it is a electric screwdriver. It will change your life. It will change the world. Seriously, the best 30 bucks you could ever spend. Did you have a name as a magician? Uh, I've had multiple. The Amazing Josh. Why? Yeah, it's always the amazing. It's always the amazing. Then once I started getting more into like my comedy magic persona, I was Anomaly the Magician for a while. Anomaly. Later, I was dating this girl and uh, she pointed out that my last name is Edelman and I could be Mr. E, which is Ooh, mystery. Ooh, mystery. Oh, dude. Now, now that's the one I go with. Interesting. Very when interesting. I do when I do it still. Yeah. When you when you dust off the old top when hat. When I dust off the old top hat, I go with mystery. Well, guess what? This is a magic trick because we you made those those blinds disappear. I'm sorry. That's like the hackiest. I'm sorry. Guys. No, I I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> 
I went to the Comedy Magic Castle once, or here. The Magic Castle. Magic, I'm so sorry. There's also the Comedy, Comedy Magic, Magic Club, Club in Hermosa. Yeah, yeah, I went to the Magic Castle once, and a magician, I don't know how he did it, he, whatever, jacked my cell phone, and then he blew up a balloon, and he popped it, and my cell phone had been in the balloon. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this feels very like magician assistant, like the wonderful mystical magical blinds. The funny thing is, if someone was like running up behind the blinds to do a magic trick, people would be like, I can see, right? Yes, I can see everything. He's right <laughs> I there. I see everything that's happening. Now, one of the dangers of these is if these cords hang down, because that is kitty spaghetti, and they will go nuts for it. So a smart hack to prevent that is we're just gonna put in these little white hooks right next to it so that they can hang these up. I made them white so that you don't see them as much. And because this is at full length, what we're gonna do is just gonna loop and knot this here and trim it so that we don't have to worry about any other crazy kitty situation. And now, next up, we're turning our attention from the windows to the walls of the ceiling. So they have incredible ceilings, but we kind of have this kind of boring, very boring, lame light up here. Now we're on a budget. We're not going to swap out the lights. We're not going to like re-hardwire or get someone to swap it out. We're not going to buy a new light per se, but we are going to take this opportunity to do a very fun renter friendly hack for anybody who has a flush mount light like this. That's maybe even a boob light. This is the easiest, chillest, lazy girl way to kind of add a little bit of a different vibe to the space and not have to call an electrician. But first we have to answer one mystery question. Tony, I have a question for you. <laughs> How did those stains get on the ceiling and is it related to you? I think, I think it was from flooding because it rained one time in LA. <laughs> Magic trick gone wrong? It might have been here since before I got here. I'm so judgmental. I honestly was like, they probably are guys that had a kegerade that exploded. And next, in a very exciting magic trick. We are going to disappear that and recover it with ASMR. A 24 inch paper lantern. So here's how this genius hack works. You get a regular paper lantern. They're so cheap. I think this was $7. This was 24 inches. And if your light fixture is narrow enough, you can literally just slide it over. And we mount it on the ceiling and then it can just hang over. Fun fact, if you guys wanna know how big of a light fixture to have in a room, you take the measurements of your room, so let's say it's 10 by 10, add them together 20 inches, that's how wide you should get your light fixture. Fun fact. A few notes about this. Number one, what do you do if the middle circle is not, um, it can't fit over the existing light fixture? You just cut around to whatever one does. Secondly, are you worried about rice paper lanterns catching on fire? No, because we are using low heat LED bulbs. These have been on all day and I just freehand grabbed them with my own hand and took them off. So they don't generate that much heat. You just wanna make sure that you have enough space so that your bulb obviously isn't right on the lantern. And you may wanna cut like a seam, like you may wanna cut it like halfway between so that you can fold over the other rice paper so that it doesn't just all like tear off, if that makes sense. Wait guys, we have a cameo from Puck who has been very, this whole time. <laughs> okay, sorry bud. All right, so here's some things you should know. It might not look pretty on the top. Also, some of these are like not concentric circles. It's a little bit of a spiral. So you may have to kind of like eyeball like where to start, where to stop. Also get some pliers with some wire cutters in them. That way you can cut through the wire. And then I just poked these little hooks, little cup hooks through the paper on the top and that's how they're gonna hook into the ceiling. Usually guys, if you're putting anything into the ceiling, lots of times you need a big, <laughs> doing <it> right. <laughs> you need a big anchor or something, but these are so little, you're literally hanging up tissue paper that these are kind of gonna be fine. Moment of truth. Totally can't see on camera, but it does indeed work. Josh is pulling up the right vibe. Ooh, magic light changing, color bulbs are the coolest thing to have in your house. And uh, I will have some links below if you want yours to do this as well. Alrighty, we've been credenzing, we've been blinding, and now it is time for my favorite time, which is Sassa Clock. 
We're just gonna add in a few more things to make the room feel homey, feel nice, feel lovely. Starting with this empty corner, which really needs some sort of greenery. And you know I'm a thrift girl. I found this beautiful basket for $10 at the thrift store. It is very large, takes up a lot of space. It's a nice texture, works well with the blinds. And if the kitties wanna come scratch on it, that's fine. It's pretty large and tall. And you know I'm a fake plant girl. So we have this beauty, which I also found at a thrift store. And pro tip guys, if you wanna fake a large tree or bush, all you gotta do is get a 99 cent dollar store trash can, top it upside down, add your plant on top of that and it gets larger, elevates the space, really takes up the corner the way she should. Tony, thoughts? <laughs> Great bit, kid. And continuing with our very groovy, very mid-century theme, we are bringing in not just one, but two coffee tables. <gasps> what, 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 whoa! Guys, these are so cool. They are classic atomic mid-century shaped. They are two different sizes and they're meant to kind of be nested together. This is such a cool option when you have a little bit of a larger couch and the coffee tables are too small. Also great for a space like this where you might wanna pull one over for that couch. Super cool, super stylish, and guys, these were 40 bucks. Now, originally we had talked about doing a, maybe a bar cart or something in the corner just to make it more of a like gentleman's vibe. We decided against it, but you can always just fake a little bar moment with a tray. You guys might remember this tray from a previous DIY challenge. I had it in my stash. I had made it over a few months ago and now it is the perfect spot for their little alcohol. Yeah, so cool. Now I will say, despite this being a bachelor pad and a lot of dudes living here, um, they did have one very cool thing that totally worked with the room, which is a beautiful old school navy blue fan. Works perfectly with the rug. We love things that are truly functional and gorgeous, and this is a perfect blend of the two. So good job, fellas. All right, now we have a beautiful room, but we have this little kind of blank area. Josh was very industrious, and he just hung this little mail station slash hook which is great, but we have this big, boring, blank beige space. So what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna put up some really beautiful, colorful art. Josh, would you like to tell the people about this beautiful art? So my friend, Laura Gordon's mother, Susan, is an amazing artist. And uh, this had been sitting in Laura's apartment, but Laura just moved and is getting new art from her mother and so donated this painting to me and I think it really ties the room together. You gotta have a piece of art that ties the room together. So shout out to Sue Gordon. I will link her website below. How could we forget about good old... Um, Mr. Guillotine? Mr. Mr. Guillotine. Uh, he's gonna stay here. I'm the one who owns it and I can't say it correct. <laughs> Mr. G. Um, he's gonna stay here because why not? But I always think that there's a way to make even the craziest item in your home, a piece of decor. And that is by turning Mr. Guillotine into, oh yeah, a hanging planter. Whoa. Guys, this is gonna be all the rage. Etsy is gonna be like, how I made um, my chic boho guillotine planter. This is the perfect opportunity to like add some spice and add some pizzazz. So guys, when in doubt, add a plant. And now it's time for everybody's truly favorite time. <gasps> Pillow, Pillow time. time. Sloma. <laughs> Guys, we wanted to add some fun throw pillows in and because we have our beautiful bright blue accent chair, we were like, let's bring in the lighter blue that already goes with the navy blue and let's add a really fun pop with the yellow. By the way guys, pro tip, when you are buying throw pillow covers and or inserts, get an insert that is two inches larger than the actual throw pillow cover. That way they fill them quite nicely. These are 18 inch covers with a 20 inch pillow. Guys, size matters. Guys, when you're working with accent colors, something like a little planter or vase is a great way to add a pop. Like we don't need a lot of yellow in the space. We just need a little to complement those throw pillows. So a fun little yellow plant is perfect. By the way, this was great and I spray painted it yellow because I am crazy. Another thing in this room is that we are mixing some wood tones. We have this dark, rich walnut, and then we have this very light, which is more like a birch, I believe, and a little bit of the lighter bamboo. But you can make those a little bit more seamless if you bring in something like a beautiful wood tray in a darker tone. Everybody needs a little tray on their coffee table for candles, remotes, 
little items, and this is a perfect way to tie all these wood tones together. Well, Josh, we did it. Tony, thoughts? He didn't run away, so obviously he loves it. He approves. Yeah, Josh, how are you feeling? Oh my God, I am like so happy. I'm convinced that my next relationship might last an extra month or two. <laughs> One month extra per throw pillow around. We got to add our pops of color. I think it looks lovely, it looks clean, looks bright, and I can't wait to see how the cats destroy it. We laughed, we cried. We laughed, we cried, we, we got mauled. But before we go, I have one final question, Josh. Can you show the people a magic trick? All right, Katie, so this trick is called wild card. Okay. In my hand, I have nine cards. Eight of them are the same. One of them is our wild card. Okay. For this trick, we're gonna be using the nine of clubs. So we'll take one nine, we'll place it face down, one nine face up on top of that, one nine face down, one nine face up on top of that, one nine face down, one nine face up on top of that, one nine face down, one on top of that, and then the two of diamonds is our wild card. Now, here's the crazy thing about wild cards. Is that any card a wild card touches will magically transform Whoa! into the wild card. Now, if we take this wild card, turn that one over. This wild card, turn that one over. This wild card, turn that one over. And this wild card, turn that one over. Do me a favor, Katie. Tap the top with each. Tap the top of each of the cards with the wild card. And will you turn over the top of each one? Ah! Oh my god! Ah! They're all two of diamonds, guys. Oh Thank my you. god! Guys, Mr. Anomaly. Anomaly. The amazing, the amazing Josh. Josh. <laughs> Perfect, guys. Um, if you guys want to. the incredible Katie. Hey! If you guys want to keep in touch with me, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also subscribe to my newsletter, which is linked below, where I share fun tips and behind the scenes and cool decor stuff. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Josh, for impressing us. And I hope that you guys will make a magic trick happen in your home very soon. They're all two of diamonds!